Tom and I are here on the campus of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia, and 160 years ago today, it was raining steadily and had been raining for 24 hours. That's right, and the first major battle of the Peninsula Campaign is about to take place here in the mud and rain. It's a battle neither side truly wanted to fight. Johnson's army is retreating from the Warwick line, mired and slowed by the mud, when the tail end of their column is caught by the Federal vanguard outside the old colonial capital of Williamsburg. To try and buy time for his columns to escape, Johnston orders James Longstreet to turn around and check the Yankee advance. One of Longstreet's brigades stacks arms right here on the grounds in front of Wren Hall, waiting for orders to engage. That's right, Greg. Interesting note, one of my ancestors served in the 3rd Virginia Infantry and fought here under Longstreet during this Peninsula campaign. And he wasn't alone. Over 30,000 Confederate troops saw action today against some 40,000 Federals. It was a confused action with limited line of sight, terrible weather, and command confusion. Well, confusion on the Federal side. Longstreet actually does a, a very capable job today. But the Army of the Potomac is led by Edwin Sumner. And I use the word led very loosely. Right. Uh, Sumner on the best of days is not a great Corps commander, and today is not one of his best days. Unlike Longstreet, Sumner is confused, overwhelmed, and indecisive as the battle unfolds. He fails to support Hooker's isolated division and almost allows Confederate counterattacks to drive the Federals from the field. Almost, and that's the key word, because late in the day, the Army of the Potomac rebounds and turns the Battle of Williamsburg into a tactical draw. And I think the credit for earning that draw is often misplaced. Newspapers at the time gave the credit to Winfield Scott Hancock, who earned his nickname, Hancock the Superb, for his actions today. Hancock's men fought well, but to be honest, they only saw action at the periphery of the battle very late in the day. In his own mind, George McClellan took credit for the turnaround at Williamsburg. After dithering and ignoring calls for his presence at the battle all afternoon, McClellan finally did make a late appearance in the waning hour. And by all accounts, his dramatic arrival was loudly cheered by the rank and file troops who briefly saw him ride by. Like Hancock, McClellan's contribution to this battle comes very late. And the man who turns the tide here is the one-armed general, Phil Kearney. Winfield Scott once called Kearney, quote, the perfect soldier. For my money, he's the most colorful, inspiring, and fascinating officer in the Army of the Potomac. Born into a fabulously wealthy New York City family, Kearney rebuffed his father's wishes and instead joined the Army. He attended West Point, fought in the Mexican-American War, and twice served in the French Army in Europe, including with Napoleon III's Imperial Guard. He was the first American ever to win the French Legion of Honor. Yes, he has a fascinating career, and by the time of the American Civil War, he has spent decades basically as a soldier of fortune. And by the time of this battle, Williamsburg, he is chomping at the bit, ready to fight. Greg, let's paint the picture. It's raining heavily on May 5th, and Confederate counterattacks have broken Joe Hooker's division. The Federal position is in collapse, with men running to the rear in confusion. At this critical moment, when the battle has turned into a rout, Phil Kearney appears through the smoke and rain. This period pencil sketch, now in the Library of Congress, captured the moment perfectly. He's riding his splendid light gray horse, waving his sword above his head with his one arm. His troops are coming up on the double quick, and he calls out to one of his regiments, Men, I want you to drive those blackguards to hell at once. Two of his staff aides are killed next to him, but Kearney refuses to go to the rear. He's up front with the men, rallying them with a voice so loud and so commanding, it cuts through the din of battle. It is a hugely dramatic moment, and it's the arrival of Kearney's men at 3 o'clock that checks that Confederate counterattack and restores order to the Union line. Right, right. All credit to Hancock uh, for his work at the extreme right of the Union line. But without Kearney's counterattack at that point, uh, it would have been a rout. In the aftermath of the battle, McClellan's report frames Williamsburg as a great victory. Quote, the officers and the men feel I saved the day, he wrote. But the two generals who did the heaviest fighting, Hooker and Kearney, were barely mentioned by McClellan, and both of them felt personally slighted by his revisionist view of what had otherwise been a horribly mismanaged action. For all of McClellan's boasting, the rebels successfully got away and began their retreat back up to Richmond. That's right. The first major land battle fought here today of the Peninsula Campaign may be over. 
but it won't be the last. In fact, we're going to be back in two days for another battle where Hood and his Texan brigade will earn their reputation. Texans move them.